Hi guys, I'm back with another AP Statistics video, and today we're going to be talking about percentiles and how to calculate them. Now, you've probably seen a percentile before, but you didn't know what it meant, so I figure the best way to show you what it means is to give you an example that we're all common with, test scores. If you've taken the SAT, ACT, or a COGAT, or some sort of test, they always like to express your score as a percentile. Now, for example, let's say I get my test score back and it says I'm in the 43rd percentile. Well, that means 43% of the scores on this test were below my score. And, of course, as because we know percents have to add up to 100, it would also mean that 57% of the scores were, were above mine. So you see, you see what percentiles do here. They divide the data. They tell you how much of the data is either below a data value or above a data value. That's it. That's, that's all they do. Now, I'm going to make one point very, 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 very clear. When you are calculating a percentile, your data needs to be arranged from least to greatest. I cannot stress that enough. In fact, I'm going to say it one more time. Your data must be arranged from least to greatest. On the AP Statistics test, most likely they will give you the data already arranged from least to greatest. But if they don't, make sure you do. It's very unlikely that they won't give it to you arranged already, but just in case, you know, I mean, you know how AP, AP test writers like to be tricky. I mean, you've seen that kind of crud before. So just remember, when calculating a percentile, the data must be arranged from least to greatest. Moving on. There is a formula to this, and I'm going to show you what all this means in a minute. But here's the basic formula. And I and okay. And this letter I is your index value. Remember how I said your data is arranged from least to greatest? Well, the formula will give you an index, and if you're not familiar with computer science, the index just is a position, right? So let's say my, if I get an I that is equal to 10 after I solve the formula. That means the 10th number in my data set going from the least value would be the index or the number that would mark my percentile. P is your desired percentile. So let's say I want to calculate what number marks the 60th percentile. Well, my P is just going to be 60. And n is the number of values in your data set. So if, if I had a, a set of test scores that were, if I had a set of 30 test scores, my n would be equal to 30, right? So I'm going to also, but there's a little more to the formula that you need to deal with after you calculate i, right? Or solve for i. And that is, if when you calculate i, you get a non-integer, which is a non-whole number, you'll need to round up to the nearest whole number. So if I get let's say 12.05 as my i, I'm going to have to round up to 13. And it doesn't matter if I get 12.00000001 or 12.99999 or 12.5643422. As long as it's not a clean integer, a clean whole number, I have to round up. But in the event that I do get a whole number, in the event that I do get a whole number immediately after solving for i, then I'm going to need to take the average of the number in the i position and the i plus 1 position. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense, because I'm going to go through an example to show you exactly what it means. So let's get to that example. Okay, so here we go. Bethany, a teaching assistant at the University of Canada, was asked by her supervising professor to analyze the 25 test scores on the most recent mycology exam, which, if you didn't know, is a study of fungus. He wanted to know what score marked the 50th percentile. Yes, I can't spell what. Get over it. Calculate the median. Now you're probably asking, okay, you you just want, he said you wanted to know what score marked the 50th percentile, and then you ask calculate the median. What the heck? Well, this is a classic AP statistics trick, right? They're gonna give you some information. They're gonna try to throw you off with the the final, I guess, question, I guess, in this case. But what you need to know is that the 50th percentile and the median are the exact same number. When, when they ask you for the 50th percentile, they're also asking for the median at the same time. They mean exactly the same thing. So let's try it, right? Oh, I colored over my test scores. That's not good. Just erase that. All right, so here are our 25 test scores, right? And we need to calculate the 50th percentile, right? So my P is going to be 50 because that's the percentile I want. And I'm go my n is going to be 25 because I have 25 scores in my data set, right? And notice I've arranged them from least to greatest, which is very, very important. And when I do this, I get an i, an index value of 12.5, right? And remember, if you don't get a whole clean number, you have to round up. So you round up to 13, and that's what our i equals, right? 
I equals a dot on that thing. God. Our I equals 13. So that means we have to find the 13th number in our data set, arranged from least to greatest, is going to mark the 50th percentile. So let's try to find that, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 77 would mark the 50th percentile. 50% 50 of the data in this data set is below 77. All right, but let's try an example where you don't get a, where you get an integer, where you get a clean, nice, round whole number. Daquan Ye East, a teaching assistant at the University of Manitoba, was asked by her supervising professor to analyze the 25 scores on the most recent psychology exam. He wanted to know what score was marked the 40th percentile. Again, I misspelled what? Get over it. It's not important. This isn't grammar, is it? So, again, we have our 25 scores, and we're going to do the same process as last time. Our P is going to equal to 40, because that is the percentile we're looking for, and our N is going to be equal to 25, because there are 25 numbers in the data set. Again, arranged from least to greatest here, remember that. So we do that, and we get our I is equal to 10, right? But remember, when you get a clean whole number, you have to take the average of the I and the I plus 1. Our I that we solved for was 10, right? That's going to be I. But we also have to take the average of the number in the 10th spot and the I plus 1 spot, which is going to be the 11th spot. So the number in the 10th spot was going to be 70, which is the I spot. The number in the I plus 1 spot, or the 11th spot, is 71. And we're going to take the average, so we divide by 2. And we get 70.5. So that means that the 40th percentile would happen at a value of, of at a score of 70.5. Now, whether or not that score would actually exist, eh, that that's questionable. But don't worry about that. Um, in but that is the summary of which how you calculate percentiles. If you have any more and. and if you are really astute and you're, you know, a guy who loves numbers like me, you might notice there's something inherently tricky and something inherently deceptive about this definition of, per of and this formula that AP Statistics uses to calculate percentiles. If you catch what it is, let me know in the, in the comments or shoot our channel a message in, to our inbox. But hey, now you know the formula of how to calculate a percentile. So good luck. And if you're, I, I hope that you do something fun with your time. So go play outside.